Um, I, Matt and Paul, Matt, Matt who's the uh, drummer, and Paul, who's the guitar player, started playing in a band together when we were in seventh grade. So it's been a long process. And Pete, the other guy, and me were in a band together starting in ninth grade. So uh, just a, you, you've known each other for a long time. Yeah. Forever, yeah. Enough that you might want to kill each other on occasion? Make we it work it out, you know? <laughs> if we had wanted to kill each other, we would have done it at this point. Right. Yeah. I guess we, there was, we, you know, we were just like, we started in New York and then there was, we got like a big record deal. And uh, we put out, you know, a couple independent things and then we got, like, for some reason, all the big labels just had to have us. So it was weird, we got flown around all over the place. We got a really big record deal and then we put out a record and then we had a lot of internal trouble and we broke up. I'd give you There was something about you had there was leftover money from Jonathan Fire Eater that allowed you to start. A, a no, they always say that, that, but that actually wasn't true. We didn't actually save any money. But the, it's nice. Sometimes we'll say that we saved money from the Jonathan Fire Eater experience, the yeah, big label deal, and started a, a studio. But that actually is not true. It makes us seem really smart and you know well prepared, but that didn't actually happen. <laughs> <laughs> then how did you have the studio? We borrowed money from friends and had, had took on investors. How they could, you know? Took on investors. We did. And have you, have they, what's, how's well, yeah, the return on that? Yeah, the studio closed in like 2006, and we actually paid them all back, somehow. Why did you close the studio? Because Columbia University bought the building and threw us out. Oh, okay, so it wasn't that the business model wasn't working. Was, the business model was, was not, not working, working at all. Oh, okay. from day one. So it was a great relief. <laughs> it never worked. It was a great relief. I can see you're married, you're married. Is it hard to, you know, support a lifestyle? With, Doing yeah. what you do? Definitely. You have to travel to make money, so that's the only way you can make any money, is to go away for a long time. So. Or to do really embarrassing things. Or embarrass yourself, yeah. Like? You know, at TV ads and stuff like that, and put your songs in weird places where they dump along. So have you turned down a lot of opportunities to No, I actually wish we were offered more. <laughs> yeah. say yes to everything. What, what's different you, this time? Well, I, when we were, did You and Me, we were a lot more interested in doing these big, grand, lush songs. Um, and that was sort of our sound that we latched onto after a while, was being able to do that. And when we did this one, it was, it was really about just doing just the stripped down band and having more of a raw rock sound. Usually when we write dark stuff, it's, in our mind, it's sort of like supposed to be funny. We called our first record "Everyone Who Pretended to Like Me Is Gone" because, like, Walt came up with that when we were just like we laughing was, like, in the, the studio. Because he ever, right? and he was like kept tacking words onto this like stupid title that we all had, and then we just thought it was all so. <laughs> we just the first time he said it, it was just sounded funny. We and thought the was, rat was the funniest thing in the world. The rat like, was like a sound. joke when we wrote it. It was just like a dark. Matt played this beat that he uh, he just looks funny. Funny. He's it's so fast. It looks. And then Paul's playing the guitar as fast as he can possibly play it. That was how the song was written. Surprised when the rat uh, caught on the way it did? Um, it no, really caught on I wouldn't that. say it really caught on, you know? I don't know. I, it was like really, you could tell it's a really catchy song. Everybody loved, you know, people hear it all over the world. You go play and like people don't know your songs and they always know the rat like every time. So I don't know. No, I wasn't surprised at what it did. I, w I would have thought that more people would have like bought it. Honestly. What's the deal with this novel you're writing? It didn't really happen. We it's, thought it would be really funny to have written a, a novel together that said John's Journey by the Walkman and to have it for sale on our merch table. We thought that was just about the funniest thing in the world. And we thought it would be particularly funny if we actually went through with it and did it and didn't talk about it. But all we ended up doing was talking about it and not doing it. <laughs> the moment, we were working on it for years. And the moment we told people about it, literally not a page has been written since we ever told it. So how far did you get? I we have about 15 pages. 15 pages? No, yeah. I think we have like 90 pages. I doubt that. I think Pete has it on his computer. So what's the story? It was just like, this is supposed to be It wasn't even that funny. 
funny. That was kind of part of the joke, actually. You know, a lot of ideas work like that. Yeah. Got to be willing to let them go. Yeah. yeah.